what sparked the decision to start Clay, and what do you feel like um, his presence opened up? Uh, it just felt like um, he had a little more uh, spacing on the floor to start the game, and um, so um, you know, it's it's not doesn't necessarily mean you know it's permanent. It just felt like tonight that was important. And what stood out to you, obviously, from the second half, just just able to just turn it up and yeah. outscore those two final two periods. Much better uh, level of uh, competitiveness in the second half. Uh, I thought they outcompeted us in the first half, and um, you know they were making it difficult for us to get the ball across half court. Uh, they were playing really, really hard, and we didn't match that. And the second half, I thought we uh, flipped that around. I thought Wiggs' uh, defense on uh, Terry Rozier second half was uh, one of the keys to the game. I thought J.K. Uh, really did a, a great job competing, coming up with some rebounds and loose balls. And uh, and great to have Loon back in the lineup. You know, Loon it represents um, a lot of what we're about. You know, just the professionalism and and um, staying ready. And we've missed having him out on the floor. And uh, it's great great to see Loon step in and and play well and help us get a win. How good was Draymond on on Bam? Uh, yeah, Draymond w w was great. I mean, I, Bam hit so many tough shots tonight. Um, you know, all you can can really hope for is to keep him, you know, away from the hoop. And he made, um, I don't know, it felt like seven or eight turnaround fadeaway jumpers. Um, but Draymond made him work for everything that he got. And, um, you know, I thought that was really key. And, you know, we didn't have to double, so we were able to, to guard the three-point line pretty well. And uh, Draymond's always, you know, a key to our defense, but especially so tonight. Coach, you held the heat to, uh, I believe, 37 points in the second half. You mentioned the second half competitiveness being much better. But what do you think was a key other than just, was it just guys like guarding their yard better? Or what led to that? Uh, just, I, I, like I said, I think Wiggins set the tone with his defense on, on uh, Rozier. And better, better ball pressure, but also uh, better um, job of staying in front and not allowing as much penetration as we did in the first half. Steve, obviously, the... The record's better on the road than it is at home. What do you think it's been worth to you guys over the years? That what, when you, what, what do you think it's been worth to you over the years that when you come into a, a, an opposing arena, there's often a lot of fans for you guys here? I mean, right. you're one of the few people that get, you're one of the few teams that gets loud cheers right. in this building. What, what's what's that like? The collective of that been like for you guys over the years? Um, yeah, it's it's great. I mean, you know, you walk into any arena um, in the league on the road and there's automatically, um, you know, just uh, blue and yellow jerseys all over the place. You know, Steph's got so many fans uh, across the country and a lot of people cheer for him no matter where we are. And, um, you know, so that, that, that part is, is nice. It's, um, I, it didn't work last year, so it's working again this year. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know why. You mentioned their their pressure, their ball pressure, giving you guys some issues in the first half. They play a bunch of different variations of defense. It's all on tape. Um, did that full court pressure catch you guys by surprise? I guess. And how different is preparing for this team versus other teams? Yeah, I mean, we we expected it because that's what they do. They you know they play a lot of zone. Um, I don't know where their numbers are this year, but historically they're one of the uh, the, the the most. Um, zone heavy teams in the league and um, you know especially when they're shorthanded um, I know Spo well um, he's challenging those guys to, to pick up full to, to get into the you know into the ball full court pressure they got a uh, an eight second violation on us in the first half a, a couple steals and and I thought that kept them in the game and and I just felt like we matched it much uh, much better in the second half we were more aggressive attacking uh, the press Another one of Miami's defense, just what's the challenge of going into a game and preparing for Bam defensively? Like, what, what's unique about him? Well, he's unique challenge? in that he can, uh, he can push the ball in transition. Um, he's the fulcrum of their offense. You know, um, they give him the ball and they, they start running their off ball actions, dribble handoffs. Um, but he can also be the lob guy, set the high screen and dive. Um, and as you saw tonight, he can make that, that mid-range shot. Um, with ease, so he's a great player. So obviously, the, the second half, you guys were able to just turn it up compared to the first. What stood out to you from that second half? Uh, I think we just ramped up the intensity. You know, uh, 
they kind of beat us to the loose balls in, in the first half, uh, kind of slowed down our pace. And I think when we got out and ran in the second half, we was able to get stops. Uh, we was a lot more physical, and I think that changed the game. This is a bunch of pretty good games in a row for Clay. Just at this time of year, how important is that? That's huge for us. Uh, you no, know, he's a key part to our team, and uh, you no, know, he's been pretty, really, really good since probably before All Star break. Uh, he's been putting good games together on both ends of the court. You know, for us to be good and be a special team, he got he's we depend on him, and uh, he's been doing a great job. And we need him down the stretch. Matching up with Bam for a good portion of the game, just what what kind of problems does he present on both ends? Uh, you no, know, we don't get the matchup uh, often, so uh, you know it was fun uh, playing against him. Uh, you know, you know he's pretty athletic. You know, he's a great ball handler, has great feel, and uh, he was hitting a lot of his mid range today. Uh, you know, it's pretty tough to stop him. He's shooting high arcing shots and different things like that. And defensively, you know, he's a one of the best in the league. Uh, you know, uh, guarding, uh, protecting the rim, guarding on the uh, perimeter. Uh, he's a pretty elite. So, uh, you know, he definitely gave us problems definitely in that first half. He took us out of our rhythm a lot in that first half. And, uh, you know, he's a special player for a reason. You mentioned the team's second half intensity being better. Uh, that included, you know, holding the team to 37 points in the second half, including, I think, 40% from the field overall. What was the key to that? Was it them cooling down, or was it a better effort from you guys on that end? I think it was just a better effort. Uh, you know, us respecting their shooters a little bit more, closing out harder. Uh, you know, just overall, just playing with more intensity. Uh, you know, they play extremely hard, and you know, sometimes it's couldn't be shocking, you know, uh, when they come out there playing that aggressive and that, uh, that greedy. And uh, once we matched that, uh, we was able to, you know, play our style and uh, and play our, our winning basketball. How I know Bam, you mentioned Bam hitting some mid rangers, but how good was Draymond just in the one on one scenarios that mostly allowed you guys to not have to, you know, help too much? No, Draymond was awesome. That's what we expect from him. Uh, you know, going into any matchup, we never usually plan on doubling or even digging that much because we know he's a, you know, probably one of the best ever and in an ISO, ISO, ISO situation. No, Bam still hit tough shots. Uh, he made him work for it, though. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Draymond's been one of the best defenders in the league for a reason. So, uh, you know, him being able to guard him one on one was able to made us be able to you know, focus in on their shooters and uh, take them out of their stuff a little bit. Big picture on this team, just w where do you think you guys are at? And you know, considering standings wise, you know, lack of season left, but I guess still a path to to do something. Uh, no, we uh, we got a lot of work to do. You know. Uh, feel like we still got a chance to do something special, but you know we got to go out there and prove it. Uh, none of these games are going to be easy down the stretch. Uh, we got to go out there and dig, dig deep, and uh, play our style of basketball and play winning basketball. You know, can't just have a one good game and then have a low. We got to you know string together some wins. So uh, we're more than capable of doing. We don't show flashes throughout the year. Uh, we just need to be peaking at the right time, and this is the time. What jumps out looking at that box score? Um, I'd say our uh, assist to turnover ratio is really good. And that's always a great indicator of just a good night at the office. You are basically played the same minutes tonight that you had been coming off the bench. Is it different, though, starting? Not really. I just try to keep the same approach, uh, have fun, communicate, get great looks. And uh, just, yeah, those those three things. I, I think you have like 50-something made threes this month on, mm. on, on 40. This guy's trying to jinx me. Some percent. Um, like how, I, I know even in the, the rougher times this season, you've felt good shots and, and your shot was there. But, like, how good a rhythm do you currently feel in? Uh, I feel really good. I would like to repeat this performance in Orlando tomorrow night because these games are – so crucial, obviously, and I think it's just about enjoying this, obviously. But once we get on that plane and we leave Miami, we got to turn the page because uh, the NBA does not wait for you. So we got to we got to focus, man. They're, Orlando's playing really good, too. So we got a big task tomorrow. You held the Heat to 40% shooting overall, and I believe 37 points combined in the second half. What was the key to that? Was it more? It was a, be a better effort from you guys. Was it them cooling down? I think uh, we played well as far as not letting them get downhill and 
in the paint repeatedly. I mean, Bam is a really good player. It helps when they're not when they're missing, you know, their elite scores and Jimmy and Hero. So that obviously or that obviously was a big reason why. But other than that, um, get Draymond great credit too. I mean, he made it hard on Bam. Bam made some really tough jumpers on him, but uh, Draymond is such a great post defender. He uh, he's hard to go against for you know thirty five to forty minutes a night. Obviously, you, you mentioned how you feel good in terms of your play, but what pride do you have in terms of just just the second half of your play yourself individually? I mean, I've been prideful ever since I laced up basketball sneakers. Uh, you know, a lot of my, um, you don't want to say identity, but of who I am is reflected how I play on the basketball court. And my father was a hooper. My older brother is a hooper, and I am as well. So I take great pride in just trying to be my best nightly. It's a really hard thing to do, but it's uh, what the greats aspire to do on a nightly basis. And um, I'm just a prideful player at the end of the day. Clay, I wanted to ask you about Kuminga. Is there something specific that you've seen evolve or is this just time and reps yeah. and work? Just hmm. I think his uh, I think his rhythm to the game has gotten so much better. He knows when to take a jump shot. He knows when to attack. He plays above the rim. He's a two-way player and he's oozing with potential. And then you forget he's only 21 years old. Um, so you get excited for his future. I mean, I've been very impressed with the work ethic he's displayed the past couple years and. I know he's going to be a future star in this league. Uh, had you met Neymar before? Yeah, we met uh, We met all the way back in 2016. So I've known Neymar for a while and big fan of basketball. And we're all a big fan of football. So we just uh, respect his greatness. Clay, the Heat have been a team known to give up, you know, some of the most threes in the league for years now. And with going into tonight, do you know, you know, I'm, I'm sure you know that going in, was that part of the, the strategy as far as you you know, having such a big game tonight, just knowing that that was going to be available for you? Uh, we do know that they help. They're a very great help defending team, and they cover up their mistakes well. For us, it's a, we thrive off making threes, obviously, Steph and I. So you see a couple go in. It always helps early. And uh, it was an emphasis to draw two and kick to start the game, and I thought we did that well throughout the whole 48 minutes. You mentioned, the, you know, kind of the importance of the Orlando game tomorrow. Mm -hmm. How late is it starting to feel, and and how challenging is it starting to feel? With what's you know ahead of you guys, standings wise, lack of time left. Challenging, um, but you can't be intimidated by what's ahead. You just got to take it one game at a time, and most importantly, have fun and play your hardest, and you can live with the results. And, like I said before, you can't look ahead. You just got to do what you got to do if that's in front of you. And it happens to be the magic tomorrow. Now that the team is almost fully healthy, how is the team uh, confidence that you guys can make a big push heading into the play? Very confident. It's been conf. I mean, we're very confident we can make a run, but uh, we're not even thinking about the postseason. We still have whatever 11, 12 games left, and we want to finish as strong as possible, whether it's nine wins, 10 wins, 11. We know it's doable. So it's about just. Uh, simplifying things and just looking ahead to the game tomorrow. Steve praised uh, Andrew Wiggins' defense on Rozier, especially in the second half. Um, it seems like he's been a little bit more aggressive offensively recently. How different is this team when, when he is kind of hunting his shot and, and getting going on both ends? That's why we won the championship a couple years ago is because of Andrew's two-way play. We obviously need him to be that, to go where we want to go. And he's so vital to what we do. Without him, we cannot reach our full potential. So we all love Wiggs, and we know what he's capable of. And like you said, his defense is, when he's playing tenacious defense, it's, uh, it's going to fuel his ability to get to the rim, and just his confidence will improve as well. Nice. Uh, what dynamic did, did Clay bring back to the starting lineup tonight? Uh, just to, obviously, he's his gravity, 
His ability to give us, you know, spacing on the floor. I think it, uh, it was an effort to unlock JK and Wiggs, you know, give them driving lanes and, you know, get them more involved early in the game. Obviously, Miami is, they're really kind of sneaky in some of the defensive schemes they have and zone, man, uh, you know, different coverages, bam, protecting the rim. So it was helpful to have, you know, Clay out there doing what he does. Um, and it's a credit to him just in general and being able to respond to whatever he's been asked to do this year, uh, whether it's coming off the bench, whether it's starting. Uh, most people think that might be, I don't know, maybe they think it's easy to just transition from one to the other, and it's not. You have to kind of prepare your mind to, you know, and your body to be ready for whatever you know is thrown at you. So it's credit to him and his 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 attitude and his preparation and you know going out there and hooping the way he does. Steph, you guys held the Heat to 40% shooting in the second half, and I believe 37 combined points after them shooting about 51% in the first half. What was the biggest change for you guys on that side of the floor? Just playing a little bit more physical. We kept getting beat on back cuts and even whether they scored or not it was causing our defense to have to react and then they would open up a, either three for somebody in a corner or uh you know, just a breakdown that would you know give them space and i think we got a little bit more discipline in the second half it's the nba there's so much talent out there and obviously they're missing a lot of guys um but if you give you know them confidence and you know their patterns start to you know attack you. That's when they're they're lethal. I don't care who's out there. So we were very much more disciplined in the second half to keep things in front of us, make them take tough shots, and you live with it. Steph, the Bam's talked about in the past. There was a play in his rookie year where he was guarding you, and it was kind of the play that put him on the defensive map. I'm just wondering what number one, if you remember that play, and two, just what, what are the ways you've seen him develop defensively and, and kind of matching up in that way. I do remember that player for sure. Is in this building. Uh, he's he's versatile. He's long. He can move his feet. He, he's a, obviously a great rim protector. And you know, there's a reason they've been in the finals twice. Uh, obviously, you know what Jimmy's able to do and the, the guys around him. But Bam's a huge part of connecting the game on both ends. He's obviously a great uh, weapon on on the offensive end with his. He can put pressure on the rim. He's got mid-range. He hit a three tonight. They run a lot of actions around him. So then you add that to the defensive you know, presence. That's why he's an all-star. That's why he is who he is. Steph, there's a lot of teams that can make a reasonable argument why they're going to be the team at the end that wins the whole thing. Is this the most parity? Would you even call it that? Is this the most parity that you can remember and is it good that there's a lot of teams that clearly have stepped up in recent years and are com can compete for the whole thing? It's great for the league. It hasn't been good for us this year. <laughs> we, uh, we've been on a nice run since January 1st and haven't really made up any ground in, in the conference standings. Um, but, yeah, you want to see – capable teams all around the league. I think on paper, right, like it's it's names uh, in the Western Conference and it's great teams and a combination of all of that that, to your point, it wouldn't be a surprise if any of the top, you know, 10, 11, whatever, made a run. Um, obviously, Denver being the champs and still at the top of the standings, they're – they're the champs until somebody beats them, um, and even on the other side. So, yeah, it's great to see, you know, that much competition, and I'm sure it'll be a uh, a show down the stretch of the season and the playoffs with whatever matchups happen and a lot of excitement around the league. Steph, Clay said that the team is confident to make a push towards the playoff. What does, does the team uh, need to do better to make that big push? Play a brand of basketball like we did tonight. I think we were, like I said, in the second half, we were a lot more disciplined, a lot more physical on defense. We took care of the basketball tonight, which is a big deal for us, the way that we play. Kept the turnovers down. 
created some really good looks, but can't get too ahead of ourselves. Just take it. Every, I know y'all love that answer. Take it a game at a time. And uh, but honestly, that's our only way to get to where we want to go. Because it's been a, a wild roller coaster of emotions this year for us. Steph, the Heat are known for kind of doing everything they can to take away the other team's best player. I know you've played against them for years and you faced every coverage. But going into a game like this tonight, how does that affect your mentality? Knowing that you know you can get these you know forced two to the ball possessions and other guys will be open, or does it? Mix you up in any way, not knowing what type of defenses they're going to run? It challenges you to kind of see the game. Um, like, and I was kind of talking about earlier, whether it's a zone possession, a man possession, they were pressing. It tests your patience for sure, because you got to be, you don't know when your looks are going to come. You know, you're going to see bodies. I think there was a couple of possessions I came off of pin downs and caught it, and there were two people there, got by them. There's another person back there, and we swing, swing, we got a good look. Uh, they were trapping off of ISO uh, possessions and get the ball out of your hands and swing it, find the open guy. They got Loon that dunked down in you know, the fourth quarter because they were paying a lot of attention to our perimeter. So like, as long as you just stay patient and see what's in front of you, keep your turnovers down, don't get rushed, then whether I'm taking a shot or we're getting a good look, that's good offense. And you mentioned the roller coaster of the year, obviously with emotions and a quick turnaround for you guys with with Orlando. But what stands out to you to some of the some bit of the success that you guys have had on the road? That's why we think we're still a good team that can beat anybody because we can. You know, our defense can travel. You know, we've had good performances even at home. We've had big leads on good teams, but have let us slip. So. You know, we don't uh, – our record doesn't – you are what your record is. I mean, that's what the, the line is. But we do feel like we've kind of underachieved on that front. And – but there's still belief that you can get hot, that you can establish the identity that you need to have uh, to be a, a team that can win four games against anybody in the Western Conference in a playoff series. And until we don't have that opportunity anymore, we're going to still believe it. Just to follow up on the earlier questions about the way the Heat toggle between defensive schemes, um, why do you think more teams don't play that way? You have to be a very disciplined team and a very connected team because it requires a lot of trust and communication. Um, obviously, I have a great coach that year after year, uh, you know, they have their core, but. They have fine guys that plug those holes and play a certain brand of basketball. So if it was easy, everybody would do it, right? How good has Clay been for an extended stretch now? He's been great. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, I think he – there's nobody that uh, could handle the – kind of whether you're off the bench, you're starting, how many minutes you play in, in, in comparison to his entire career and his body of work. Nobody can handle it like Clay in, in the sense of, you know, just being prepared, accepting his, uh, you know, what he's asked to do and, and going out and performing. And I think he shot the ball extremely well as of late. He's been very consistent. And he's given us a huge boost in whatever role he's played. So uh, there's a it's a, it's a challenge. He could have gone the other way in the sense of, you know, resisting the the evolution of what he's been asked to do this year. And he's responded extremely well. We need that energy because he gives us so much on that front.